Hi, my name is Evgeny Mrolyubov. I'm a technical marketing engineer within the Advanced Threat Solution Group at Cisco Systems. In this video, we are going to do a deep dive into the integration of Cisco Email Security Solution, Email Security Appliance and Cloud Email Security, both of them, with AMP and ThreatGrid. Let's start with a quick recap of how file reputation, file analysis and file retrospection work together in general. File reputation service allows us to capture a file on a network, email, web gateway, or on the endpoint, calculate a hash and query the AMP cloud to receive a disposition back, either clean, malicious or unknown. Malicious and clean files are normally not a subject for additional investigations and the policy action can be taken accordingly. For unknown files, this is when we want to provide additional analysis, and we can do so by taking the file out of the network and uploading it up to the file analysis service, ThreadGrid. ThreadGrid applies both static and dynamic analysis techniques and records results of file execution into a human-readable analysis report, as well as issues a thread score overall, and the two together help us determine how likely is this file malicious. What happens at the same time is that the AMP cloud may be updated with the analysis results from ThreadGrid, and this can lead to the AMP cloud changing the disposition for a given file, for example, from unknown to malicious. Cisco Talos can also constantly push intelligence about files that they analyze into the AMP cloud, and this is something that complements AMP's global intelligence database quite a lot. Eventually, this can also trigger retrospective events that help us notify you, our customers, about all locations where these files were seen on the network, whether it was seen on a network or a content gateway or on the endpoint, depending on where you have deployed the AMP license. What's important to keep in mind here is that the authoritative source for convicting a file is the AMP cloud, but not ThreadGrid directly. Now let's have a look at how we can apply the concepts that we have just reviewed to Cisco Email Security Solution. AMP is the name of an add-on license for Cisco ESA, and it brings three core capabilities. The first one is the capability to run file reputation queries on attachments against the AMP cloud. The second one is the capability to submit unknown attachments that meet the file fault criteria to ThreadGrid. And the third one is the capability to receive retrospective notifications from AMP in case of a disposition change. Assuming that the message wasn't blocked by the preceding ESA inspection layers, such as sender reputation, message filters, multiple anti-spam engines, multiple antivirus engines, only then the message arrives to AMP and ThreadGrid inspection point. And let's now unfold what happens there. When a message with an attachment reaches AMP after antivirus scanning, ESA attempts to parse the attachment from the message by checking the message headers. It's basically checking for the compliance with RFC 2045. Even if the message is not fully compliant, ESA still makes best effort to parse the attachment. The next step is to check whether an attachment is an archive file and if so, attempt to unpack it. If any of these two steps fail due, for example, format errors or file corruption, the configurable policy for unscannable attachments comes into effect. If the file was properly parsed and if the unpacking happened correctly in case of an archive, both the contents of an archive and the archive itself move to the next step, checking of the internal ESA AMP cache. And this is something that helps us understand whether a disposition of this file was already acquired in the past and whether it could now be derived from cache. If the cache doesn't contain an entry for this file, ESA will communicate with the AMP cloud, either public or private cloud, depending on what you have deployed, to query the file reputation, which will return back the verdict, either malicious, clean or unknown. On a side note, a useful addition in ESA 11.0 is the ability to configure the file reputation cache time to leave which gives more granular control to the administrators over the cache usage. Once we have a verdict, malicious files are processed according to the configured policy. It's important to keep in mind that if we're evaluating contents of an archive file that has multiple files inside, it's enough for even one of them to be malicious to consider the entire archive and the message malicious. Clean files continue through the ESA work queue to content filtering and outbreak filtering if you have configured these inspections. 
And finally, the attachments with unknown disposition are treated a bit differently, and they may be requested by the AMP Cloud for upload to ThreadGrid. AMP Cloud can assign an upload action and say yes, please upload this file, or it can say no, don't upload this file. The first scenario may happen when the file analysis results for a given attachment are not available in the AMP Cloud, meaning they were not shared by ThreadGrid in the past, and it's likely because the attachment was never analyzed in ThreadGrid. This is where you start seeing the importance of having either full private cloud deployment or full public cloud deployment. Because in the case of hybrid deployment, ThreadGrid appliance can never share analysis results with the AMP cloud and therefore cannot add to the collected intelligence. Files that were requested by AMP for upload and that have an unknown disposition can proceed to the next phase. In the second phase, ESA performs a couple of checks to see if the file meets the file upload criteria and if it contains any suspicious content that could likely show up as malicious. ESA first of all checks whether a file meets the following criteria. Is it supported file type? And this is something that can be configured by the ESA administrator at the time of file analysis configuration. The second check, does this file exceed the file size threshold, which is defined by ThreadGrid? And which is currently 100 megabytes. And this is something that's well above the average that an email client would process, so we don't really see this violated too often. If the file type and the file size criteria are met, the attachment continues to the next step, claim IV preclassification check. This step helps us determine whether there is any dynamic content, object streams, macros, embedded EXEs that are contained inside of the file. This step is needed to ensure that only the files that can possibly be malicious are uploaded to ThreadGrid, and others that have no chance of being malicious because they don't have any dynamic content are not uploaded to ThreadGrid and do not burn out file upload limits unnecessarily. If either of those criteria are not met, the message continues through the work queue without uploading the file to ThreadGrid. Alternatively, if both criteria are met, ESA assigns a corresponding policy action like for example uploading the file to ThreadGrid and placing the message into the file analysis quarantine. But there are also a couple of checks additionally that happen right before that. In the third phase, more validations are performed before ESA finally uploads the attachment for analysis to ThreadGrid. Let's have a look at the workflow. The first couple of steps for ESA are to check whether the local file upload queue is full or not, and whether ThreadGrid public or appliance, is reachable. If either of these conditions is not met, the attachment is not sent for analysis and the message continues through the ESA work queue. Assuming the local upload queue is not full and ThreadGrid is reachable, ESA proceeds by placing the associated message into the file analysis quarantine. ESA also checks whether the attachment was already uploaded to ThreadGrid by another device, for example another ESA in your deployment. And if that's the case, a duplicate will not be uploaded for analysis again, and therefore will not burn out your upload limits. Alternatively, if the attachment is not yet known to ThreadGrid, ESA would proceed and submit the file for analysis. This time, it's up to ThreadGrid to check if the sample upload limit for this day was reached. If that's the case, ThreadGrid discards the request, and the associated message is released from quarantine and continues to the ESA work queue. If the upload limit was not reached, the file gets accepted and queued by ThreadGrid. As a side note, more daily submissions could easily be added either through sample packs or ThreadGrid Premium subscription. What happens at the same time? ESA also adds the record of the SHA-256 of this file to its internal database, where it's kept for up to 12 hours, and ESA starts to periodically poll ThreadGrid, asking if the file analysis was complete and it does so until it receives a positive response back. If there is no analysis complete message from ThreadGrid within 12 hours, and if the file analysis quarantine was configured to hold the message so long, the SHA-256 ages out and the ESA releases the message from quarantine to the work queue. Otherwise, once the ThreadGrid analysis is complete, the results of this analysis are added to the AMP cache on ESA, the associated message with an attachment is released from the file analysis quarantine, and further work query scanning would go through AV and AMP again. This time, 
ESA would use the recently added entry from the AMP cache to derive a disposition for this file. Even though it's not displayed on the slide, what happens at the same time? Once the Reddit analysis is complete, it also shares the analysis results with the AMP cloud, so that other AMP and Threadwit integrated devices on the network can take advantage of the new intelligence. Threadgrid Cloud can share analysis results with the AMP Public Cloud, and Threadgrid Appliance can share analysis with the AMP Private Cloud, but not the other way around. File verdicts can change as new information emerges. We have mentioned that the AMP Cloud can change the disposition based on the TALAS analysis or based on the Threadgrid analysis. Cisco ESA is constantly staying in touch with the AMP Cloud by sending a periodic heartbeat message. And this message also asks the Cloud if there were any changes in the dispositions of the files that were sent through ESA in the past. If there was indeed a disposition change for a particular file that passed through AMP and Threadgrid inspection on ESA, the solution would alert the administrator specifying the details necessary to go back and perform proper investigation. Notification includes information about the message, the attachment, things such as subject, sender and recipient, file name and hash, and of course a new disposition. As a side note, ESA User Guide has a section which is dedicated to the AMP logs, and that could be potentially helpful to administrators to get detailed knowledge of how the solution works. We have just reviewed the integration of Cisco Email Security Solution which relates to both email security appliance and cloud email security with AMP and Threadgrid. So what's the value of the integration? It's very easy to see the value from the evaluation results. Consider an organization with 220,000 email users and within one week of evaluation, this organization saw roughly 35,000 hits by AMP and Threadgrid. Consider that those messages with malicious attachments were not stopped by send reputation, were not stopped by anti-spam and were not stopped by antivirus engines enabled on ESA. Even though these results might be a bit better than what we usually see, AMP and Threadgrid integration with ESA still delivers a huge value to the customers, especially when fighting against advanced threats. If you are evaluating AMP and Threadgrid on ESA, also make sure to include Threadgrid Premium Portal access. And that includes many great things that are not available to the integration on its own. Things like Threadgrid Cloud Portal access for manual file uploads, more file types, more extensive reporting, global threat intelligence database access, and APIs to integrate with other security tools are all there for you. As a summary, I wanted to emphasize that securing your organization from advanced email-based threats is not an easy task. And of course, it requires a multi-layered approach with all inspection layers tightly working together and complementing each other. I definitely hope it was useful and thank you very much for your attention.